Hello all, this is a new series I'll be doing where I will be um, giving how-tos for all the sentinels of the multiverse. That'd be heroes, villains, possibly environments, but you don't really need to know how to do environments. They just kind of happen. So I will be starting out with all the heroes in alphabetical order of the ones that I have. Which, of course, starts with Absolute Zero. He is a Difficulty 3 hero. Well, Complexity 3, I should probably properly use. Um, he is a, quite a setup character. And he has... Uh, he's a damage dealer, but yeah, he requires a lot of setup. He's got five different one-shots. He's got six different ongoings. He's got four different equipment cards, and two of those are modules, which is his his um special keyword keyword unique to him. So yeah, that's cool. I'm just going to go through all the cards from modules to the rest of the equipments, ongoings, and then one shots. And then I'll be telling you, basically, how to play him good, or at least how I play him good, because I'm good at pretty much almost all the heroes. I say almost, I'm not good as all of them. We're going to start out with his character card. He starts out with 29 HP, and his innate power is Thermodynamics. That basically allows him to deal himself either one fire damage or one cold damage, which interact with his modules. He has a module f that would do weird things whenever he'd take fire damage and weird things whenever he'd take cold damage. Isothermic transducer, which there are four copies of. Um... Whenever Absolute Zero is dealt fire damage, Absolute Zero deals one target that much cold damage. So, that mixed with his dealing himself one fire damage, he could use that after taking that damage to deal one target one cold damage. Obviously. <laughs> his second module is the Null Point Calibration Unit. Whenever Absolute Zero would take cold damage, he regains that many HP instead. So, he's also good at healing himself, I should have mentioned. There are four copies of this card. And they are limited, so don't even think about having multiple and play at once. <laughs> Those you will definitely need if you want to play him good. So... Moving on to the equipments, you have two copies of Cryo Chamber. Increases damage dealt to absolute zero by one and reduces damage dealt to absolute zero by one. So that could help you in a pinch if you need healing fast. It also gives you a power to deal yourself five fire damage to destroy this card. So that's useful also can be used if you just want to play it and then immediately use that power if you have the isothermic transducer out to deal a hefty bit of damage but there are only two copies of these so use them wisely this is another one of his great cards there are three copies of it it is focused apertures increased cold damage dealt by absolute zero by one that is great if you need to heal yourself more or to do like a lot of damage because increased cold damage is great um some of his cards will make him take fire damage if you do not want to take fire damage and instead need the healing mixed with focused apertures say you take five fire damage for some reason you could then deal one target that much cold damage, but it'd be plus one from focused apertures, so it'd be six. 
So you could deal that to yourself if you also have the null point calibration unit out, practically healing you by one. Because you take five, then you'd regain six. The five equals, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. I don't, but you probably do. Yeah, it's 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 super useful. You'll definitely want it if you can get it, but you don't always get it during a game. You, we're gonna we're gonna continue on to his ongoings now. I put all the non-limiteds on the left and the limited ones on the right. You have two copies of Coolant Blast. It gives you a power. Absolute zero deals one non-hero target X cold damage, where X equals the amount of fire damage that has been dealt to absolute zero since the end of your last turn. That is a mouthful, but it can be useful. Like, if you're fighting someone who just dealt you a, a lot of fire damage, that's useful then. So yeah, you can't use a card to do yourself fire damage. Wait. Ignore what I just said. I was thinking of something else. <laughs> Professional. Professional Absolute Zero player. Shut up. Glacial Structure. Only have two copies of it. Basically, you play it, and then you can use its power if you want to draw three cards, then destroy this card. It's great if you need more cards for your setup. The, it's kind of uh, uses your whole turn, though. You play a card, and then you use a power, and then you're done. So, if you want to also heal that turn, but you want to use that, well, too bad! You don't get to! Unless you played it previously and you didn't use it yet, and then you played a card that would that could do you cold damage with your no point calibration and you know, who you. But that's beside the point. Impale. You have two copies of it. You play it next to a non-hero target, and at the start of your turn, absolute zero deals that target two cold damage. And if the target leaves play, destroy this card. It's super good if you're dealing with. A, a, a pretty pretty bad enemy because you play both of them on him because they're not limited and then you just deal a lot of damage to him a lot two at the start of your turn every turn is great play it on the character card of the main villain unless there's multiple character cards or if you're fighting the dreamer next you got two copies of Sub-Zero Atmosphere. What it does is any villain card which would act at the end of the villain turn instead acts at the start of the villain turn. That is useful um, as soon as you can get it in play. For most villains anyway, uh, I'd just like to say now, all cards are good, all cards can be bad. It's situational, okay? So... Play whatever is needed in the situation. Um, there's so many variables. With this one, like, say you're fighting just a simple Baron Blade. That is so useful, because say he just played a Blade Battalion, which attacks at the end of his turn. It, it wouldn't attack at the end of his turn. It'd attack instead at the start. So basically, he plays it, and then it doesn't do anything, and then you have a turn to take care of it before it hits you for a lot of damage. It's great. Cold Snap. Two copies of it. It's a limited, so you can only have one in play at a time. At the start of your turn, Absolute Zero deals each non-hero target one cold damage. It is great if you don't have to worry about not attacking a specific target. Other than that, you might not want to play this one. Say you're fighting the Dreamer, which you don't want to attack the main character card of in case if you didn't know, this is not good for them. Say you're fighting Ambuscade, and oh no, he plays a Sonic Mine. Well, too bad, you're gonna get Sonic Mine because you can't choose to not attack with this. So there. It's great in most cases. Thermal Shockwave. This is the final card that gives you an extra power. You have two copies of it. The power is... 
Absolute Zero deals up to three targets, one cold damage each. Then Absolute Zero deals himself X fire damage, where X equals the total amount of cold damage dealt by Absolute Zero this turn. That can be super good if you have health to spare and mixed with that. And that, of course, you always want these. And that one. This, this, this is good power, but you won't always want to use that one. But it's good. It's a little more usable than that one. That one's a cool and blast, obviously. Getting on to the one-shots, I organized these by least amount of copies on the left to most amount of copies on the right. And within the same numbers, I just alphabetize them. I don't know why I'm telling you this. But who knows, maybe you care. Huh. This first one-shot is Fueled Freeze. You only have two copies of it. It allows you to destroy up to three ongoing cards. Then Absolute Zero deals each non-hero target X cold damage, where X equals the number of ongoing cards destroyed by this card. It's super good most of the time, but you don't always want to wait for there to have three ongoing cards that you want to destroy of the villain, that is. Because then you'd have to deal with those for a while until you get three, and then you're like, oh, I'll just use it now that there's three. No, you could use it sooner. It's not that bad to only destroy two or one with it. You'll still be doing a lot of damage to all the non-hero targets. It's good. I'd also definitely recommend... Uh, actually, I'll give uh, synergies later. Never mind. I was about to say, you just play Legacy if you're going to play Episode Zero. Uh, but, you know. You have two copies of the card Horrifier. This is your damage dealing one. Um, don't... No one recommend playing it without modules. Both of them. Absolute Zero deals one target two cold damage. Absolute Zero deals a second target two fire damage. Then Absolute Zero deals himself one cold damage and one fire damage. This damage dealing card right here. Say he had increased one damage, right? Just, just in general. Plus focus apertures, plus his modules. You'd be dealing one target, four cold damage, a second target, three fire damage, then you'd deal yourself three cold damage and two fire damage. So you'd heal, then you'd take away a bit. But you could um, deal from the fire damage yourself that cold damage to just heal even more, or you could damage another target. You see how good this is? This is a good damage dealing card. This next one's a little bit more chunkier. That's a word for it. There's three copies of Frostbound Drain. Absolute Zero deals one non-hero target three cold damage. Then Absolute Zero deals himself three fire damage. It, eh, it's, it's, it's bigger numbers, but a lot less numbers. You know what I'm saying? It's a good card. Kind of like Horrifier, but it's... It's a little eh, situationally better or worse than Horrifier. Horror is a, is a special way to say cold, by the way. So, that's why it's called that. This is a good card. Damage dealing card. I recommend playing it without modules, though. Okay, situationally. Say you have your focused aperture in play, but oh no, it got destroyed. We'll say hello to modular realignment. Select one equipment card from your trash and put it into your hand or into play. Then Absolute Zero deals himself one fire damage and one cold damage. There are four copies of this to get your equipment back. This is a super good card. Can, if you want, to only be used for that second bit of text. But it's good either way. It's a great card. I was trying to give a thumbs up, but it wasn't in frame, so whatever. Okay. Last one. <laughs> this is his best one-shot, okay? Onboard modular 
module installation. All right, bear just 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 stay with me. All right, best card. You may draw a card. Search your deck for a module card and put it into your hand, and then shuffle your deck. And then you may play a card. All right. You see where I'm going with that? You get a free card. You get a free any module card you want. Always start out with that one if you have none. And then you can just play a card. If you have one of these and you won't be penalized for drawing a card. There's four copies of it. If you won't be penalized for drawing a card, which can happen sometimes. Or sometimes you can't draw a card in general. But if you have no penalties on drawing cards, play this card if you have it. It's a free card and an extra module if you need one. You can just play an extra card after it. Play it if you can. It's great. Okay, the setup you want. Alright, there's a hair. Gross. So, the setup that you want is you want your modules, obviously. That way you can use thermodynamics to your fullest power and not take so much cold damage and do stuff whenever you take fire damage. It's great. But, um... Say you started out with this card, but not any of your modules, right? You start out with onboard module installation. In When you would search your deck for a module card and put it into your hand, you might always want to choose the null point calibration unit first. It's better to keep yourself alive first than to, you know, start dealing with fire, basically. You always would love your focused apertures in play, so that's just another thing to add on to it. I just like to say these two, if you're gonna play absolute zero, always need. The rest of these, completely optional during a game. Always try to get both of these in play at a time. The rest of these optional, but they all help out. Like focused apertures, increasing your cold damage dealt by one, it's great. If you need healing, play that one, and you also take less fire damage. Or, if you just want to use this power to deal yourself a big chunk of fire damage, if you have health to spare to deal with something else, a lot of cold damage, that's good too. But, you do that damage first and then destroy this card, so if you wanted, you could do yourself what that would be for fire damage, because fire damage dealt to you is reduced by one. And then you could do yourself six cold damage and basically heal for two and destroy this card. It's good if you need a little too extra health as well, but also good for damaging something for like, what, five cold damage? Maybe even more with focused apertures or damage buffs from a different hero. It's great. It's great. It's great. Okay. If you need more cards and you have nothing better to play, nothing better to use your turn on, Play Glacial Structure. It's 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 okay if you need it. I don't... It's good, okay? Coolant Blast might as well have it in play as long as you know that nothing's going to destroy it. But it won't always mm, come up. If you plan to use it, well, deal yourself a lot of fire damage with a card and then use that power. It's good. Impale? Definitely want to stack both of these onto the main villain. Unless you don't. Then you'll just have to manage where these go. Because if you don't want to damage the main villain, you'll have to damage probably all their little minions or something. You'll have to manage where you put any of these, really. And then, then once that villain is gone, it goes into your trash. So better find a way to get it back if you want to keep using it. This, mostly good, like, all the time. Mostly. All the time. Alright? Sometimes good. <laughs> I'm having too much fun with this. Cold Snap, yeah, play it. Just play this card. Unless there's a card that will do you more, more bad things than good things for damaging it. And there's a hair and I don't like it. Okay. Moving on. Cold Snap, great if you... Yeah. Man, if, if you're just fighting a villain, 
NG and you want to do a lot of damage, you might want to play this card mixed with focused apertures, okay? It's, it's a good card. <laughs> Thermal Shock Wave. Great card, great power, recommend. Um, a 10 out of 10. Not 10 out of 10. What am I saying? That's a good card. You don't always want to use it, but it's good. Okay, moving on. Fueled Freeze, like I mentioned previously. You don't always need to wait till there's three ongoings to use this card. Use it if you even see one card and you're like, we can't have that in play for too long. And then absolute, the player playing Absolute Zero is like, mm, why don't we wait for two more of that really bad card so I can use this card? Make sure they don't agree to that, okay? Use it if it's a really bad ongoing card. You may just want to use it if you have nothing, uh, no other option, okay? These are damage dealing cards. Make sure you use them appropriately with the right modules. This can also be used for damage dealing, but, you know, if you have an equipment card in your trash that you'd like back, use it for that. This helps you with your setup and gives you a free card. Unless you play an extra card so it's like it didn't even happen, but it did happen because you got extra stuff. Okay, that, that is the recap and that is the how-to. You know how to play Absolute Zero now. Play him right. He's not that bad. And just get these out. Get that out if you want. Play that one always. And somewhere. Just put this one somewhere. That's okay. I'm just going to flip that one over because you don't need it. It's good, okay? Fine. Great damage dealing cards. Use these. You better not hold off on that field freeze, okay? You know how to play Absolute Zero now. Um, incapacitated powers, if you want to know them, is one hero may use a power now. Select a hero and increase the next damage dealt by that hero by two. Or destroy a target with one HP. I'm going to fix this. Boom. You don't need that last bit of text because it's the most useless one out of the, the other two, okay? Use literally any of the top two. Forget the bottom one was even there. You, didn't, you never want to use that. Unless he's, like, immune to damage somehow, but he only had one HP left somehow. Okay, okay, sometimes it's good, most of the time it's not. That is how you absolute zero, okay? He's a really great hero. Um, I've never seen him do bad in a villain, other than villains that go by quickly. So, use him for villains that allow you enough time to set up at least two modules, alright? You have, like... 40 cards in your deck. Literally... 12 of them get you modules. 8 of them are modules. 4 of them allow you to get any of these 8, alright? That is how you absolute zero. I'm done now. Base flash out. I'll see you next time with the Arjun Adept.